Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday Live, and man, uh, things are happening. Uh, uh, people like us have been trying to warn everybody. Obviously, you pay attention, so you, so, uh, you, you get the warnings, but uh, things are really happening. I have my special guest, hasn't been on here in a while. Man, I'm so excited to have him back. Please welcome Monkey. Uh, Monkey, great to have you with me today. This is cool. Yeah, good to see you, man. And I'm glad I'm actually on. I've I've uh, I've been sick for about four months, so it's been uh, you know just been refocused on a lot of other stuff right now. Just trying to get well and and uh, uh, just yeah, I got in the queue to get back on the show here. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. I know you know I, I felt bad asking you know we, uh, everybody. We were over in Israel together, and yeah. uh, and and Monkey hasn't been well since the last time he was with me. So I hope this isn't a sign of anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm doing doing great, and uh, I feel like I'm I'm on the uh, uh, on the men. So this is good stuff. Well, you look good. The picture behind you looks very appealing to me because, yeah, pretty much we've only had cold weather and snow where we live, which we're going to talk about. So this is what we're going to be talking about, everybody. We're going to be talking about Operation Paperclip. Some of you are familiar with it. Monkey's going to be filling in the blanks. We're going to be talking about NASA. Uh, we're going to be uh, updating things, and we're going to be talking about weather modification, amongst other things, depending on how much time we have. Of course, we want to take your questions and and uh, and everything. So it is going to be off the charts today. And uh, if you haven't done so already, if you want to chat on the app, you just got to uh, create an account. That's by uh, filling in your email. Pretty simple to do. You can join us on the chat. But, man, I would... You can also share this. I would start sharing it with all your friends right now. Get them to log on. Um, and uh, it's live on Roku, too. So with that, okay, Monkey, um, yeah. we're going to show a quick video. This video is about a minute long, everyone. And it's, uh, it, okay, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's a commercial, all right? I have a new book coming out. Uh, Monkey encouraged me. Yeah, show it to everybody. Yes. So uh, go ahead and check it out. And we'll be back on about one minute to talk about all these other things. So let's roll this. I had a conversation with my dad. He used to work for a company called Teledyne back in the early 1960s. And he was invited to a party in the Hollywood Hills. He said all the big wigs were there, Henry Singleton and so forth. And he said an individual showed up and they're standing in the backyard looking into the city of Los Angeles. See all these, uh, all these lights in the city out there and all the people that are out there. Someday, we're going to be able to control everyone. And he wasn't referring to just Los Angeles. Everybody is going to be identified. It's called the mark of the beast. Choosing the mark is really choosing to either live or die. There's no escape from the system. Available in paperback and ebook. Get your copy today at markingthemasses.com and watch the full interview with author. So, uh, where am I? Well, oh, there I am. <laughs> so there, <laughs> there you have it. I, I mean, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what the Lord is, what the Lord's doing. So, uh, there yeah. you have it, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, no, hey, uh, that's, I'm telling you, just looking at the cover alone uh, is, is got me very intrigued. I, I went straight out and, uh, and ordered, pre-ordered mine. So uh, I can't wait to read it. This looks like it's going to be a really good book. And you do realize I'd give you one for free. <laughs> yeah, I know. I probably could have asked, but I'm not like You didn't that even right have now. to ask. It was just going to come in the mail. So Yeah, <laughs> oh, you can still send it. I'll take it. That's fine. I'll put okay. it in my collection. I've got a lot of uh, books from folks that have signed stuff and sent it to me. So okay. that'll be cool. Uh, very cool. Thank you. By the way, the cover on that, um, I think prophecy people and, and people who follow your uh, videos would really appreciate this. The cover on it is actually was designed by AI. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I look and go, man, it's, it's just kind of a, a crazy stuff. So I mean, because the whole topic and everything. Okay. So yeah. enough of that. 
I want to get to why you are here besides the beautiful picture that makes me feel warm inside. <laughs> um, let's go, let's start here. Operation Paperclip, and then we're going to move through sure. NASA. We're going to move on through weather modification. I think you're going to help me wrap my mind around a whole lot of things today, along with our viewers. So uh, take it away. Operation Paperclip was it, well, I know it was legitimate, but just for us, yeah. for everybody watching, what was it? and what has come of it, and how did we get to NASA and so forth? Yeah, so, well, first you have to back up a little bit uh, and, and recognize that um, uh, it, it started out before you had Operation Paperclip, you had a a, um, a a top secret program that was called PO Box 1142. Uh, and, I, and that is basically the how the program began. And what that is, is a it was a location here in the United States that was used to basically wine and dine um, POWs, people that were captured in war. They would bring them over. They would uh, basically treat them really nice, uh, become really good friends with them, and then they would get their secrets out of them. And so that is how it started. And then from that, it uh, it uh, the next step was actually uh, Operation Paperclip. And Operation Paperclip was where they – uh, basically went in and recruited ger German scientists that were running the Nazi camps. So basically the guys that were doing experiments on people inside of the concentration camps. And they brought them over here to the United States and they divided them into three little groups that that they, they sprung out from there. Okay, so the first one was going to be what they call DARPA today. It was actually ARPA at the time, but it's now DARPA, which uh, if you're not familiar with that company, um, it's it is a an uh, an extension of the DoD. It's basically their think tank. Um, kind of think of it like uh, Skunk Works for Lockheed Martin, right? Mm. DARPA, uh, they were uh, basically internet driven. They were the ones that designed the internet and everything else. So a bunch of these scientists went over to DARPA. Now, if you're familiar with DARPA, um, they are the ones that created Facebook, Instagram, Google, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you name it, uh, every, almost every social platform that we have in our hot little hands today um, was created by DARPA, okay? So that was the first piece. The second piece was NASA, uh, and uh, they, they went over, that's because we needed to learn how to, you know, have a rocket program, right? And so Hitler and his cronies were working on the V2, I think it was, um, and so they had a pretty good uh, feel of, of how to do, you know, how to build rockets. And so we brought them over. Uh, we created DARPA and NASA. And then the third leg of this, which many people don't know, uh, is that uh, we sent a bunch of guys over to Ukraine that basically stood up a stronghold with our CIA uh, in Ukraine. And that's why we have huh. such an interest in Ukraine today. Uh, because we have been there ever since they they uh, they stood it up in a I think it was around 1948 um, and the documents are out there you can go Google it and uh, you can pull it it'll it'll give you all the the intel about uh, it's in a PDF form it'll give you all the information you need to know about what we did over there what we're doing over there uh, but it never went away and so all three of these these uh, I don't know, vehicles, I guess you could call it, uh, exist today, right? You've got DARPA, you've got NASA, and then, of course, you've got the CIA, and now you see why there is such a interest in Ukraine, why we continue to pump money into Ukraine, because there are a boatload of things over there that uh, we have a vested interest in and that we don't want to go away, so... Uh, we, I'm guessing also now you, you, want, you have me wanting to ask all kinds of questions that, that yes. you bring... Ukraine in here. I mean, we you know we know about the bioweapon labs. Apparently, yes. there were a lot of them. You probably know exactly how many. Yeah. But i have been convinced for a long time that there's all kinds of uh, hidden th things that are over there that we don't want falling into the hands of the enemies, or we don't want them falling into the public's uh, understanding uh, from things that yeah. Biden's been up to and. Other yeah, other yeah. things the government's been up to for a long time, which yeah. you know maybe we'll have enough time to get into that. Now this is also even more interesting to me now that you mentioned these things based on and, I, and listen, we weren't going to talk about my book at all, but I'm just thinking about this conversation I had with my dad about him and the tech industry in 1960 yeah. and 
the, these guys from NASA that came over, and there were only a couple of them. He said they were all the bigwigs, though, because it, yeah. it was a very small company when my dad was there with Teledyne, five people when he started. Yeah. And when he's talking about, hey, we're going to control the masses of the people, meaning yeah. the whole world, it was, he said he got a very dark feeling. Everything was good oh. up until that point. So when you bring in DARPA yeah. and the tech industry, yeah. And, and NASA, I mean, I'm looking at all this going, this is just, this is it's, just off the chart stuff. Yeah, it's not a coincidence. No, no toys about it. And oh, by the way, the guys that started out over at DARPA were the guys that they picked and and, and basically pulled over and created, uh, you know, pushed them over to head up NASA. Now, what they didn't do is they didn't let the German scientists run the organizations. They had a US head over them, but these guys were very, very involved in every aspect of it. When you think about it today, uh, everything that, that we uh, have from a social media perspective, all of the intelligence gathering, everything that we do and the tools that we use uh, are all kind of ha hand in hand with what NASA does, right? They put the satellites up. They've got all the the, the things that are high altitude that, that we work with. Um, it's it's kind of crazy to see how they have all just kind of uh, meshed together uh, into this big system that we're we're dealing with today, right? It's you can't avoid it. You can't hide from it. Um, they know more about you than you know about you. It's it's absolutely crazy. Wow. And then you know you look at this. Okay, so you have these Nazis that yeah. are brought over. This this is what it, the beginnings of this really is because of need to have the rocket technology and so forth. I think yeah. most people think okay, when World War II ended, Hitler's it all dead. Went away. They went to South America, right? Which a lot yeah. did. Uh, yeah. South America uh, was it? Uh, was it uh, Venezuela or Argentina? Uh, uh, I think a little bit of both, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're even in, in down in Puerto Rico, and I didn't know that. Um, I was surfing down there one time, and uh, they were talking to me like I like I was a local, and I'm like, I don't look anything like a local. How? Why do they think I'm a local? And it's because uh, they had so many Germans down there. They just thought. You know, blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, that I was uh, Spanish speaking German. So um, they've got a lot there, too. So they, they kind of scattered everywhere. The the scientists, it wasn't like they just had four or five scientists that came over. It was yeah. 1600. Wow. But wow. I hear there's classified data that has been released to the public. I can't get I can't seem to find it. Um, uh, but I've heard that number is is more, you know, 60, 70,000 people came, you know, in through that 60 program. To so 70,000. Yeah, holy! That's what I heard. The real number was actually super high. Wow. So, okay, when you look at our government right now, and there's obviously so many different shenanigans that are going on. So, um, yeah. you really see. I mean, <laughs> there is this influence that is so dark, it and is. you start to look at uh, at Operation Paperclip, all the the whole tech industry, but. You look at the government, you look at people that are in power, and, and to me it appears this has influenced what began back then, has influenced every branch of America. The government, the universities, yes. the leaders yeah. that are in different places of position. Yeah, yeah it, sure, it sure has. And actually, if you really go back, uh, you look at Daniel, I think it's seven, Daniel, uh, Daniel seven, uh, Daniel uh, seven has the the uh, four beasts, then out of the yeah. fourth beast with the yes, giant, the yeah. fourth kingdom, the yeah. the that that kingdom that they describe. Uh, but if you look at that and you think about what the word Reich means, that mm -hmm. that means kingdom. So what are they all talking about? You get these guys that are out on the on the world stage now, and they're talking about this new the new world order, right? And they're really talking about this fourth mm -hmm. kingdom because remember the third Reich was mm -hmm. that was. That was Hitler and Nazi, you know, German Nazi Germany uh, in World War II. But uh, that it now what they're saying is they they're putting out this this they can't call it a Reich. If they mm -hmm. called it the Fourth Reich, they would it'd be flags going everywhere, right? So uh, instead, that's it's this this uh, this Fourth Kingdom or this uh, this New World Order that they're starting to to talk about, and that's really where it kind of makes you stand up and go, "Whoa, this is." You know, Daniel, uh, you know, he, his prophecy is pretty old. And for him to to throw out there 
uh, something about a fourth kingdom. And then now you see these guys walking around talking about this, this fourth, this fourth Reich or this fourth kingdom. And it, it like I said, it never went away. That whole mentality, everything that they've been doing, you know, you thought uh, that that World War II, World War Two ended it, but the reality is they just scattered like cockroaches. Wow, you know, uh, scattered like cockroaches. What an excellent description. So I think Klaus Schwab calls it the fourth industrial revolution. Yes, he's, he's just cloaking it with that. Exactly, you know? it's all it is. Yeah. It's being cloaked. Same message, same in state goal. It's it's uh, it's just being cloaked. It's being called something else so you don't really recognize it. It's you know, uh, if you know your Bible, it, it definitely would get your spidey senses up where you'd go, wait a minute, that's, this is all sounding really familiar. Where have I, where have I heard that? <laughs> yeah. Man, this is even, it's just becoming more and more fascinating the more you're talking. So I'm looking at this, the Fourth Reich, the Fourth Industrial Revolution, Daniel chapter 7, the Fourth Kingdom, and how it's described there in Daniel 7, it has huge iron teeth, it devours and it crushes everything. It's just totally conquering. With that, this kingdom of Daniel 7, it morphs into the um, 10 kings, the 10 yeah. horns, and then out of them comes the 11th. And we are watching that in everything you're talking about from DARPA to NASA to Ukraine and the CIA. It's all part of this morphing system right now. This is yeah. amazing. It's crazy. And it's not that far off. I mean, the technology and capabilities exists today uh it's just you're looking for that one conduit that pulls it all together and that's where i think is going to be the big uh you know that's maybe that happens after we're gone or maybe we start to see that technology that kind of brings it all together and it could be actually ai that pulls it all together because remember it's a smart system right and so it's it's pulling and feeding from all kinds of different various social platforms uh technology that's intelligence technology that's over our heads watching us every day you know we talked about the balloons uh you know that's what i think i had a, a little bit of a laugh over this because we were saying oh you know the chinese are putting spy balloons over our heads and what are they looking at you know yeah from a national security standpoint it's pretty bad but the reality is in my tracker in my watch list that i look at every single day i've got 42 u.s military intelligence balloons that are deployed all over the place. There's five or six over the United States that I can track. The rest of them, they went up and then they they went dark. And so I know they're all over the place. So when I start hearing other countries talk about, oh, it's got to be Chinese. We see a Chinese balloon up there. Uh, I, I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably not Chinese. It's probably us. And they want to get eyes off of these pretty quickly. So, uh, but yeah, that's just another one of the tools. Um, and a lot of that technology is made possible because of NASA. Wow, this is this is wild. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna, I, I still wanna get through the weather modification, but since you brought up yeah. balloons, I wanna get sure. your opinion. <laughs> yeah. So the story, I mean, all of a sudden we started hearing about when the balloons went up, um, I think I was in Mexico at the time all this was going on, so I wasn't checking the news as much as regular. Um, but all of a sudden I remember reading about, well, they shot down UFOs and I mean, I put together my own thoughts, but I'm, I'm curious as to, uh, I think there's lots of distractions out there in the whole bit. Yeah. What, what, what are you thinking as, as, as you you heard the narrative coming out and it changing? It was changing like every 10 minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I, you know, it's kind of crazy is uh, I think the first one was definitely a, uh, a Chinese balloon that made it over the United States. But then I think the others, uh, they very quickly went quiet on them. So, um, you know, there were reports uh, from F-22 pilots that said that made their their all of their equipment uh, go haywire when they when they were close to it, um, which is really unusual. Um, and then uh, other ones were like, you know, it looked like uh, an octagon shape. That that was the one they shot down, I think, over Michigan or something. But uh, you know, I heard a lot of different reports, one saying that uh, that was hobbyists that had balloons up that, um, you know, that that uh, they blasted out of the sky. So, you know, it's really it's the lie is ever changing. And so that's how you just can't keep up with it. Then I also heard Flashbang come out onto the stage uh, at, at the White House. I say the stage. I guess it could be a stage. <laughs> it is. Uh, but For it came him, out. we don't we're not real sure what it is. It's some kind of theater. Yeah, exactly. Theater. 
Yeah, but he came out, uh, you know, to the podium there and, and basically said that, uh, you know, that it wasn't Chinese spy balloons. Uh, but then he had a hot mic when he got behind behind the uh, the curtain there. And he basically said, do you think they bought any of that? You know, and, and he used different term yeah. than, than that. Um, this is a family show, so I'm giving you the clean version. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, so he was he was lying to us about it. I don't buy in on the whole um, uh, terrestrial thing, right? Yeah. Um, I, 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 you have to remember, UFOs doesn't mean little green men uh, every single time, right? It, it what it means is, um, it's just unidentified flying object. They don't know what it is, so it's unidentified. So, um, so that from that aspect, now from the green man perspective, you know, I think, in my opinion, it's probably demons and not, uh, not, yeah. you know, little alien guys coming from another galaxy far far away but yeah i i would totally agree with you on that also along those lines i have a really difficult time you're a military guy you can answer me and tell me i'm crazy if you want but i'm looking at this going okay so if it's the, the little green men coming from some galaxy far far away nobody's going to be able to convince me well maybe you can that that they have the technology to come here but they don't have the ability to escape a missile that flies at them right you know i'm, I'm thinking I, I i find kind of find that hard to believe so i never yeah. bought in any of that i believe there's a distraction if there is any legitimacy to the ufos it's demons um, or yeah. or well, exactly what you said they're flying objects created by someone we just don't know what they are at this time but yeah. the other option is is some kind of demonic presence that is that people are seeing. Other than that, I, I just don't believe the little green men coming from another galaxy right. far, far away. Uh, it, it just, I, yeah, I can't wrap my mind around it as being true. Um, yeah. I, have, are you familiar? Well, you probably are. Operation Blue Beam. Uh, yeah. Is that real? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Do you, do you know if there's any real uh, truth to it that the, you know, the fake UFOs by I think holograms or something like that to be deceptive where they're just fake yeah. yeah oh yeah completely fake you believe everything you're seeing it's it's um project blue beam is what they call it but um the uh yeah i mean there there's i've seen holograms where you can't tell if it's a person or not you know and it's um uh, you know that's the kind of technology and the the ability to um you know to put things out there to make everybody believe i mean it's it's we've we've got former CIA guys that say that they've been working, you know, um, feeding the media with stuff to just manipulate the population uh, around the world, the populations around the world, not just the U S but uh, around the globe for, for decades. Um, and now you've got these, all these smart toys that are coming out where, you know, you can literally have a hologram of somebody talking and you can't tell, or you can put a, an AI in front of someone and you don't know if it's real or not. Um, you know, they're saying that uh, a lot of the technology these days on the social media platforms, you think you're talking to a real person, but uh, but it's not even a real person. And that is somebody like me right now. I could be a complete, total uh, computer-generated thing, and you would not be able to tell. I mean, you can see it in the video games when you play them. They look, they look so real. Um, you know, you have to really look at it and go, I can't believe it's not real. Are you real? Uh, yes, I am real. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, uh, now I just, I just lost my train of thought of something I was going to... Oh, I know. You had mentioned to me when we were over in Israel about video games. Yeah. Or you, you were talking about... I think you were telling... You, you know, you spoke on both buses and uh, to yeah. both groups of people. And I believe it was at that point... You know, we had our own private conversations too. But that if you see it in a video game, uh, oh, yeah. the, the video games themselves are are created with an yeah. intent uh, by even by the government in, in yeah. many of the cases. And the video games themselves, if you see it, it's the intent is to make that become a reality. Yeah, yeah, no, a absolutely. There was a, a program that I was on um, when I was uh, still still working, pro you know, uh, this is actually a, an open source program, so I'm not telling you about something that's not, but um, it's called Squad X. And uh, I was reading the proposal because we had a, a bunch of really smart guys in the room and they're, uh, they have the ability to really talk about things very like in a, in a highly complicated nature. They, they, they can't really dumb it down. Um, and, uh, you know, they're talking about all these different uh, 
you know, this drone can do all these different things and, and we're going to make it do this and we're going to create all of these different uh, algorithms and it'll be able to track different, uh, you know, squads in the battlefield and look into buildings and everything else. And I'm listening to them talk. Uh, and of course, for me, because I was a proposal manager uh, and running the proposal operation, uh, I'm like, okay, I've got to figure out, I've got to put these things in, you know, pictures uh, is worth a thousand words, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, tells a story. And so what we would do is usually the big fold out at the very beginning of a proposal would be uh, kind of a con ops picture that was super, super illustrated, you know, uh, usually done through a computer. Um, and so um, these guys were talking about this, this, this drone called squad X that they were going to uh, be designing and working with uh, the Marine Corps on. And I said, man, you know, the, what you're describing is actually, it's a, it's a game. It's a video game. I, I played it five years, six years ago uh, called ghost recon, a future soldier. And they're like, what are you talking about? So I, I basically went to the TV and pulled up Xbox and I went and showed them the game. And they're like, that's exactly it. And so what had happened was DARPA, somebody at DARPA thought we need to go create this tape, this capability and technology. And that that's how squad X came about. It's identical. It's even got the little Google glass goggle that uh, the guy can flip up and look. Um, and it's actually got target designators and all kinds of stuff going on all because of a drone that's flying overhead and giving them, um, you know, a, 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 a I guess, eagle eye view on everything that's going on on the battlefield. It tells you friend or foe, it tells you who's in the buildings, all kinds of different stuff. And it's um, that technology uh, was all driven from a game engine, you know? And so that's, that's really, uh, so when you're playing these video games and you see these weapons that are coming out, um, if they can create it in that video game, they can create it in real life because the way the video game engines are, are designed today is you re, you create that weapon and and it'll actually have the same weight uh it'll have the same i mean for for how it performs within a game um everything i mean it's it's identical to give you an example you look at the vehicles inside of a video game there is a guy that's actually got the job when you're creating these things of putting dust on the lug nuts uh, lug nuts that go on the wheels um dust on the oh. tires uh, water on the windshield. I mean, there's there's all of these game engines that they create all of this stuff and and they decide, hey, I want I want water on the windshield and I want it at this percent. You know, um, they do it all. Uh, but they they you could literally take that thing. It's a 3D model, right? I mean, if you ha take a weapon, you're not looking at a one dimensional item on your screen. You're looking at something that can be flipped, turned, you know, moved around, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, as well as fire, you know, <laughs> uh, all kinds of different projectiles. So if they can create it in a game, they can create it uh, in the real world or or they're going to create it in the real world. That's that's just kind of the direction everything is going. So a lot of these big companies like the Lockheeds, the General Dynamics, the uh, Northrop Grumman's, you know, the big um, military contractors, what they do is they hire these engineers that are gamers, you know, because – they know, you know, or game designers, um, they bring them in and that's, that's who runs one, your proposal side of the house, but it's also who runs, um, you know, a lot of the the stuff that you're in, in the R and D side of the world. Yeah. You know, you are always fascinating to listen to. <laughs> Just wild. <laughs> I mean, when you start thinking about these things and where we are, okay. I, I, I want to, we got to get to questions in a minute, get ready to send your questions, but hold off for just another minute. Um, yeah, I want to. I mean, I have so many things to ask you. We aren't going to be able to get to all of them, so we'll save them for another time. But weather modification. I want to ask you about oh, yeah. this because here I am. I've lived, in, born and raised in Southern California. Yeah, it doesn't rain in the winter. It just doesn't. You know, every once in a while you'll have a rainy season. A rainy season here is not like a rainy season in Texas. You know, it's like, wow, it rain three days this winter instead of one or something like that. Okay, right. This year, uh, since like Christmas. It's, there's, there's maybe a few days that have been sunny. You know, some people could probably pull the exact facts by living it. Uh, it's been cloudy. It's been yeah. cold. It's cold every day. It's really, it's in the 30s every night, if not in the 20s. And it's just consistent. You know, usually we have, you might get a week like that in the winter, and then it's back to 80 degrees, you know, uh, yeah. for two, three, four weeks. And it might rain, it might not. And, 
this year's been different. It has snowed at our house, uh, whether it be at midnight or in the day or whatever, probably twice a week in the last three or four weeks. That doesn't happen out here. You know, we yeah, live around mountains. It all snows in the mountains, but yeah. not at our house. You know, I'm right. looking going, I have my jacket on all the time. I mean, yeah. I have many winters out here. I've never even needed a jacket. Yeah. But it's like, it's, t- I mean, it's totally different. And yeah. so I, I mean, it's just weird. And uh, for me, I'm, you know, I, I mean, it's kind of in, in your face for Newsom because Governor Newsom wants to, and the left want to, uh, you know, just remove all of our water and uh, of course. keep us in a drought. But we have all this water happening and snow happening. So anyways, take yeah. it away. Yeah, so that's the uh, the other piece of this. When we talk about NASA, you talk about uh, NOAA, um, which is uh, those are the guys that go out and do the hurricane hunting and things like that. Uh, you may remember in California, you guys had uh, 12 storms that came in, all rolling in one right behind the other. It was relentless. You guys had uh, uh, historic flooding in California. Um, there was a ton of, uh, of different things happening. Snow in the mountains, uh, rain down in the, you know, on the coastlines, you had record flooding, uh, big washouts, mudslides, all kinds of crazy stuff that was happening there in California. Um, during that time, what you had also, uh, were the NOAA guys going out, uh, doing some flights out over the Pacific that, uh, and in my opinion, they were trying to, uh, I think, um, kind of knock the edge off of what was coming in. Uh, through various chemicals in the atmosphere or whatever it may be. Um, I also think that they are, they're definitely using um, uh, weather warfare, right? Uh, There's somebody out there that's generating stuff. Maybe the Chinese that were getting these storms generated coming into California on a regular basis, maybe, but um, I've always been a little bit uh, leery of the whole conspiracy theory of, of uh, you know, chemtrails and all the other kind of stuff. I've, I've, you and I've talked about that in the past, but I will tell you, I uh, went into the, the 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 database, which has got uh, half a million aircraft in it, and I started tracking uh, a company called Weather Modification LLC. Okay, and then there's another one that's S O A R, uh, which stands for uh, it has to do with seeding, uh, atmospheric seeding, and um, I started tracking these flights, and they've been busy as ever over Texas, over California all the way up uh, on the, the south side of Alaska. And that's where I see a lot of the NOAA and the NASA aircraft up as up in Alaska. And uh, I think that may be why you're, you were seeing the snow that was coming in uh, because the jet stream was actually running all the way down the West Coast and then across the United States. Here in Texas, when you're getting that, uh, that snow, here in Texas, we had something I've never seen before in my life. Uh, and I've been out here for... 20 years in Texas. Um, and I will tell you, uh, we had 85 mile an hour straight line winds. Oh, and you could see, I man. mean, that's hurricane force winds coming from the storm. It, uh, uh, so whatever storm they're manipulating or messing with, uh, that's, uh, they're doing a lot of damage. I mean, think about this. When's, uh, how often do you see, uh, major tornado outbreaks in December and January? That's, that's usually a, a spring and fall kind of thing. You don't really see too many of them in the winter. Wow, that's just uh, that's just nuts. Um, so I, I mean, I'm looking at everything that's going on, and I know some people can be come to become discouraged or something like this. But the reality of it is, we have hope because everything is pointing to uh, Jesus calling us home. We don't know when, yes. but we always got to be ready, and we can be wise about these things. But I mean, everything we're talking about, you see the the the. Uh, manipulation we do know that the enemy satan himself he wants yeah. to bring about his new world order because he wants yeah. his anointed one to sit in the temple that's going to come to jerusalem yeah. so we're, we're like in this we're like pieces on a chessboard or something yeah and uh and we're all different pieces but we're all being moved and ultimately it's the lord who does the real checkmate yeah. he already did it at the cross and yeah, uh, absolutely. And, yeah. and uh so, but we can see all of this coming. So, okay, I want, got to get to some questions. Sure. And, and I know you're going to have questions about uh, just what you just said about weather modification and everything else. I did yeah. see something 
that uh, just went by, and it was it was regarding one of the things that we were talking about earlier with um, with a, 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 a Operation Paperclip. But let me let me get here to some questions. Uh, put your word put the if you have a question, put the word question in all caps so I can read it. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay, yeah. monkey. Have you watched? Uh, let's see. It looks. Uh, it's talking about Amir. It looks as though war is imminent. Iran has enough uranium for bombs, and there's a multitude of tunnels in the mountains in the border of Israel. I think that's one of the planes you've been tracking. So basically, uh, do you see a war coming in Israel based on what you've been tracking? Um, well, I would say based on what I've been tracking, I would say that uh, I think there is uh, the possibility of Israel striking Iran, I think is is probably what would be the next step, and I definitely think that's that's coming. Um, you know, you can't allow Iran, uh, Iran to um, to have a nuclear weapon. You, it, if I don't know, there's some say they already have it, mm -hmm. but um, you you just can't allow that. And so, and and if they do get their hands on one, uh, that we do know that they just fired uh, their first missile that had it was a long range. It was actually. Uh, good for a, a, about a thousand miles. So, um, if you go from the the heart of Iran to uh, basically Jerusalem, that's a that's a little over a thousand miles. So, um, they would have to, you know. But if you're if they're firing that missile from, you know, to the to the western side of their border, uh, they're well within range. They could hit Tel Aviv, J uh, Jerusalem, anywhere. They could hit anywhere they wanted to inside uh, of Israel. So that's a big threat. And uh, I mean, these guys are writing stuff on the side of the missiles, you know, death to Israel mm -hmm. and, and Hebrew and the uh, death to America. I mean, uh, you have to take those threats seriously. So I would say that's probably going to be the next thing. I don't see uh, any war. I, right now, the focus is all going to be uh, Europe and, and, and Asia. I don't think there's uh, going to be uh, anything going on in Israel um, in, in the immediate um, front just because – or with the way everything's being staged, uh, most of it is in Poland. Most of it is in Japan, uh, you know, and so those are going to be the two main fronts, I think, okay. uh, when this thing breaks out. I want to ask yeah. you about China in just a second. But with Israel, sure. I, I, I have some Israeli friends, some that you now know, too. Um, and one of them was yeah. telling me just the other day that they're, they're thinking it's a very real possibility that Israel's going to hit a target inside Iran real yeah. soon because of everything that you just said. But I, yeah. I just want to caution everybody on this too with Ezekiel chapter 38, because you know, I get that question a lot, Monkey. Yeah. How, is the Ezekiel 38 chapter war, chapter 38 war going to happen like next week or whatever? And I don't see it yet. I, mm -hmm. There's certain things that even are described in uh, chapter 38 of Ezekiel that Isra Israel's not there yet. So with, with everything that you just said, Monkey, totally makes sense. We're looking at Europe. You, you, you have the whole Ukraine issue. We, Poland, which you mentioned. You have, uh, we have Taiwan, Japan. We have all these other dynamics. And the problem, one of the problems with Ezekiel 38 is that the Bible's very clear. It, that battle happens when Israel's dwelling in peace and safety, yeah. Um, and they're dwelling securely without without walls and so forth. And the word for safety there can mean security, like with IDF. But the word for peace that's used in Ezekiel 38 is a Hebrew word that literally means tranquility. Yeah. It, it's at a time when Israel is not expecting war. It, it right. happens at a time when really everybody's getting along. And as you read the context of Ezekiel 38, the entire attack from Russia seems like a surprise. So yeah. we're, we're definitely not there. I see other things playing out first, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because um, I, you know, because there's a lot of date setting, and this is going to happen next week, and that's yeah. going to happen next week. Uh, I want to get to the uh, question about China that I have in a minute, but somebody else asked me uh, on here just a minute ago about digital currency. Do you yeah. have any idea when you see that being rolled out or your uh, thoughts on I, it? That cannot be too far off. I mean, uh, we see countries, uh, India just rolled out theirs as a test, as a beta um, in the last, you know, couple months, three months or so that they're they're running. India is a big, uh, 
you know, uh, it's a big country to begin with, but it's a big economy. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big, uh, you know, in terms of depth and knowledge, I don't really know a lot about the whole, you know, digital currency thing um, other than it sure does seem like it can't be far off. I mean, when you start watching your supply chain issues uh, get very weak, uh, when you start talking about war on the horizon, you know, uh, those are kind of things that 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 typically would go hand in hand, right? They say war is an economy. Uh, you know, many a war has been started to get themselves out of a bad economic p- uh, position. So, um, you know, this is, uh, I think we're ripe for the picking. I say that, you know, for, for a digital currency. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we look at things, you know, I, I not everybody's ready to go on board with digital currency, but what do you do if you have a crisis? That happens. Yeah. People will people will get on board when all of a sudden you can't get food. I mean, you you put yeah. a squeeze on the food. I mean, how did countries and nations and, and militaries throughout the centuries go back ancient history? What did they do? You you do the siege on the city. You cut off food. You cut off water. Guess what? You start doing these things. You cut off the supply chain. And yeah. what do you do? You get the people on the inside to comply. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you're already lean and uh, uh, you you go to war, you know, you start to having to do war pres- provisions, right, where, you know, people are only going to be allocated so much gasoline, so much food, uh, you know, or, two, you know, two loaves of bread per, per household or whatever it may be, um, but you have to ration everything. Uh, and so one of the ways that you would, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have to control it and it's going to have to be uh, they have to have a means to do that. You know, we don't really have a, a, a mechanism for, you know, 340 million people in the United States to to go out there. It'd be almost like you had to have a little, everybody had a card that, that uh, said, this is, this is how we're going to keep tabs of everybody. Right. I mean, I don't know how they're going to do it. It's, but you know, it's coming. So it'd be that B system. It's the only thing that you can think of that would really kind of fit right in the in the in the wheel housing of this whole thing so oh yeah what 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 I see developing and I can't remember I, it was a quote that I can't remember if it was Brit Gillette or Damon Duck or whoever it was that right now what we're watching is a basket of digital currencies you mentioned India we know yeah. there's over 100 countries now that are in the process of hey we're working toward yeah. it but ultimately it's going to come down to one uh, you know yeah. maybe a basket and then it will be narrowed down to 10 that are chosen what a queen you think that would be. But ultimately there's going to be one at the top that's going to be controlling everything because it it has Mm -hmm. to in order for that system to be able to work out the way that the Bible tells us it's going to, which also gives us that hope and that encouragement that everything is just going the way, hey, this is what the Bible said. So don't be too surprised and certainly don't be afraid of these things. Might be a little rough on us in the meantime, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, reality go, I mean, look at uh, the Euphrates is starting to dry up. So, uh, you know, there's, that's the revelation 16, um, but it is at the early stages of, of drying up. I mean, I just saw something in Syria uh, that said they were 30 centimeters away from, from uh, basically having no uh, water coming through the dam. So 30 centimeters is not much, that's right? Not much. So, that is uh, not much. so yeah. Yeah. So that when that happens, they lose power in that region. And then, of course, that feeds the Euphrates River. And you can already go into Iraq and you can see that uh, there are major, major high grounds uh, uh, where there is no water in the Euphrates. So wow. this is that'd be great to have you back on. Talk about that, too. Um, yeah. what, what do you see? I, we're, we're almost out of time. I know everybody would love to have you on longer, but. I don't want True. you to get sick because you were with me again. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be the common denominator. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what do you see the state of the U.S. military morale, recruitment, oh. um, everything? I read it doesn't show that we're in a good position. Yeah, we're not actually. I was just looking at uh, uh, something that came out on military.com in my last sit rep. And that had to do with the fact that, uh, you know, the department of defense was looking at their readiness and, uh, they said they had, uh, it was some astronomical number, uh, of recruits that were not, they wouldn't be eligible. Like if you look at the ages 18 to 24, um, the, the numbers were super high of people that would not qualify without a waiver, uh, to, to even serve the military. So that would be things like, uh, whether it's overweight, you know, out of condition, out of shape, 
which, you know, if you're 18 to 24, they can whip you into shape pretty quickly, but overweight, uh, drug and alcohol use. And then the other was uh, mental health issues. And uh, it was a very large swath of, of, of people that would not be able to, to do uh, military service at all because of those three conditions. So um, that's, that's one of the big things. Um, and so, you know, if there's a draft, the good news is that uh, we now know how to keep your kid out of the military, and that is, uh, you know, get them lightly medicated so they can't they can't join the military. Um, uh, you know, if they don't have any other kind of uh, condition like a heart condition or or something, mm-hmm. you know, flat feet, whatever it may be. But um, but that's the first aspect. The other piece too is is we're running pretty lean. I will tell you, I'm tracking the flights that are going over to Europe and to Asia. And, and I I will say there's a lot of people being deployed. I'm actually surprised my followers haven't been telling me more uh, about family members going, uh, getting deployed because they are sending uh, a lot more than what we uh, originally talked about from a NATO perspective, right? It was 300,000 for NATO in Europe and a hundred thousand of that was going to be U S troops. We were going to be the brunt of it, the lion's share, and uh, based on the flights that I'm seeing, I'm seeing a significant uptick in both equipment and troops going uh, uh, abroad right now. So I'd say we're we're going to go well past that that hundred thousand number. And uh, if war kicks off, you know that means you're going to have a draft coming pretty quickly. That's that's troubling me. You know, both you and me, we both have young, young men kids. that are our kids. Yeah, young men. And I, you know what. It's like, uh, that's very disturbing. Then you have a guy like Zelensky who says, Americans are going to have to send their children to die for Ukraine. Yes. Uh, you know, I mean, these things are disturbing. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Um, yeah. You know, I, I shared with you an email, can't mention any names, a few weeks ago from a guy just about his kid, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, looking, going, man, everybody, we really need to be praying and, and but be yeah. steadfast in yeah, our sure. faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is just a reminder for me, Monkey, about the need that I have to pour in the truth of Jesus to every young person that I know. Not in a right. weird way, but, the, yeah. but to understand, look, don't lose all hope if you're in Christ. Yes. Um, no matter what, we're, we're going to live forever in the presence of the Lord, but we really need to strengthen right. one another uh, right now. You know, Monkey, we've, we've, we're, we're, uh, thank you for joining me. It's 247. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody, Monkey has a store. Um, you, I mean, pretty much every, all of you already know him, but go there, check out a store anyways. There's really cool stuff. By the way, when I was in Florida, I think I sent you a couple of pictures. Yeah. I know Steve did too. And there are a few people there who, a few ladies who had your pashminas that they were yeah, getting yeah, from your scarves. Those are Jerusalem those scarves, scarves uh, pashminas. It was, it was totally cool. And, and uh, yeah. you have a lot of fans in Florida. I know that. And, yeah, um, I, yeah, for sure. And I, uh, those scarves, I've just, uh, I've got uh, about, I just got a whole bunch of them in. And so I'm still loading some of them in, in, in inventory, but I, I found a supplier when we were over there uh, through my, through my guy that does all my uh, yeah. olive wood stuff. And uh, I was able to get a ton of, um, of uh, those scarves. They're, they're beautiful scarves. Absolutely stunning. So, uh, yeah, so I finally, I got those in stock. I'm pretty excited. And you know, what's crazy is I've just started a new line of spa, uh, stuff and I haven't loaded them yet in, huh. um, but, uh, I've got a, a mineral foot soak that I, that I have it's peppermint, um, that, uh, just came in today. So, so my entire shop smells like, uh, like peppermint. <laughs> so I'm probably, I'll probably be blind, uh, when I start to, <laughs> to break the seal on the stuff and, 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 uh, get all my jars filled, but uh, this is, it's cool. I'm really excited. I got a lot of cool things coming. That's cool. That's exciting. Maybe I can get some of that peppermint stuff so my feet won't stink. Uh, yeah, man. I'll send it to you. <laughs> hey, that's cool. All right. Hey, thank you for joining me. Hey, can you hang on for a minute right before we go off? We got to ask you something real quick. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you everybody for joining me. Listen, Thursday, I've got a two, a Wednesday at two o'clock. I'll be live by myself. Love to have you join me on the app and on the website and also thursday I have a midweek update coming uh i think you'll be greatly encouraged and a lot of a lot of things are coming up i uh, will be talking to y'all later thanks for joining us